Welcome to the third part of the Eight City Morning Chemistry Light Railway podcast. It's time to find out what's been going on with each of the departments. Work has been continuing on the rebuilding of the covered area to allow work to carry on unhindered by the weather. Metal sheeting has been moved from various locations around the site to help with this task and the addition of panels from the former permanent way workshop at Sittermore Viaduct has moved this on considerably. Recent photos taken by Danny Macy show that work is progressing well with Coach 660 under the cover. This vehicle is going to have an internal brake and will be split into two sections, passenger and guard. Wood framing has been bolted to the chassis to support the bodywork. You can see the brake wheel protruding through the floor. The brake blocks have also been replaced on this coach, probably for the first time since it was built in 1957. Here you can see the original and the new brake blocks. Quite a bit of wear. Danny has also snapped a picture of Chattenden and Upnor Railway coach 204, which is named Four Elms. This coach was withdrawn from service some years ago and dismantled. Construction work has now begun, with the new steel uprights painted in red undercoat. The Chattenden and Upnor Railway coaches are the oldest in our fleet and, as their name suggests, not native to the railway. The Chattenden and Upnor Railway was a military railway on the Hu Peninsula, a few miles around the coast from Kemsey Down. They were originally open-sided toast track coaches, which meant that they didn't have doors. They were built by Cravens in 1941 and purchased from the Admiralty in 1963 by the Welshpool and Canfair Light Railway, who sold them to us in 1978 as they were unsuitable for their operation. The WLLR had converted coaches 199 and 204 to closed coaches and fitted an internal brake to coach 196. They also fitted all the coaches with doors. If you look closely at the brass door handles, you may be able to make out GWR stamped onto them, which suggests they are from scrapped Great Western Railway carriages. Coach 199 was fitted with an internal brake by our carriage and wagon team in 1979. We also named the coaches when they arrived, after various stations on the Chattenden and Upnor Railway. Coach 196 became Chattenden, 199 Upnor, 200 Lodge Hill and 204 Four Elms. They were not the first vehicles to arrive at the railway from the Chatterton and Upnor Railway. Chevalier, built in 1915, worked on the Chatterton and Upnor Railway until 1950 when she joined the Bowwaters Light Railway to work around Ridden Dock. After the closure of the Bowwaters Light Railway in 1969, she went to Whipsnade Zoo. She has also visited Walshpool and is the only loco to have returned to Kemsley Down. For a visit in 2005, where she was reunited with the Chattenden and Upnor coaches. Chevalier has since returned to Whipsnade to work with other Expo Waters Light Railway locomotives, Excelsior and Superior. With the title Permanent Way, or even Track Gang, you would expect all their work to be track related, but this is not so. They have been involved in lineside clearance and levelling, sawing up old sleepers for use as firewood, clearing the lawn area ready for the steam and beer marquee, 
repairing the drainage ditch again just outside Kemsley Down Station, vegetation clearance on Milton Regis Viaduct and the demolition of their workshop at Sittermill Viaduct Station. They have also managed to find time to carry out track repairs. Here's a set of points usually buried in Museum Walk at the throat of the engine shed. Mike Float sent me this picture from the beginning of January and by the time I returned to Kemsley Down at the end of January it looked like this. Always a busy team, their new shed has been completed opposite the museum and they are continuing their battle against the advances of Mother Nature across the site. Linda Marshall's photos of Museum Walk with its new paving and planted areas look great. It will really look nice here in the spring and summer. There's a lot going on in the locomotive engineering department. Leaders reassembly is progressing well. The saddle tank is being fitted with the necessary pipes to connect it to the boiler and will then be winched into position atop the boiler. Leader will be outshopped in red paint. We have been experimenting with different shades of paint as an earlier colour faded to pink. Why not green to match the rest of the fleet, I hear you ask? Well, a consortium purchased her back in 1969 and painted her red to show her private ownership and it was in that colour that she operated until withdrawn in 1981. Therefore she has never worn the green livery in preservation. Leader will certainly stand out from the crowd as the chosen red is quite striking. It is hoped that she will be back in service at the start of the season to reduce the burden on Melia. Superb's boiler needs to be re -tubed work that will start soon. Premier is being stripped right down to the frames for extensive overhaul. Like Leader, she was built in 1905, so some parts may have to be sent away for replication. Triumph will replace Superb in the engine shed when Superb's back in service, hopefully later this year. Amelia has been thoroughly cleaned out and washed through in preparation for the season. The boiler pipes have been washed out to clear any unburnt wood debris. It is expected that the locos will return to coal burning this season. On the diesel front, Edward Lloyd has been drained down for the winter. Victor and Barton Hall are to receive solar panels to reduce the chance of the batteries being drained between operating sessions. The latter loco has also had its fuel filters cleaned. This is a new section for those items that don't necessarily fall into a particular department. Members are reminded that it's renewal time again. You should have received a renewal form in the last copy of the new bogey, the Railways in-house journal. If you've lost it, don't worry, it can be downloaded from our website. Don't forget that this season's timetable leaflet can be downloaded from our website, along with a poster and car stickers. There's still a fair bit of work to get completed before the 6th of April so please do try to come along to the work weekends. Check the location of work and details of any work trains on the Facebook group page on the Wednesday before. If the weather has been particularly bad, that is snow, check again before you leave home. In preparation for the start of the new season, I would be interested to know which magazines you read regularly. I am aiming to send press releases to various magazines not even thought of 
the railway news. Those targeted at photographers, walkers and dog owners for starters. The bigger the readership, the better, but even small circulation magazines are worth a try. Email me your magazine titles and I'll see what I can do to get your favourite railway a mention. That's it for Kemsey Down. In the next part of the podcast, we will leave here and journey to Sittingbourne Viaduct. On the way, looking at Sittingbourne Northern Relief Road.